The raging bull of Lamborghini has been a symbol of extreme car design and engineering for almost 50 years. But today, as a new age of supercars dawns, the Italian manufacturer has set itself its most ambitious goal yet, to blow its competitors out of the water by creating the best super sports car the world has ever seen. A game-changing vehicle that will alter the scope of supercar design for good. But this will be no simple reworking of Lamborghini's old flagship models. Its engineers and designers are given the task of starting with a completely clean slate. And at its mega factory in northern Italy, the Lamborghini team has been stretched to its limits to fulfill those expectations. Now, as its latest creation takes to the road, it will be seen if the high-risk strategy has paid off. Lamborghini has been responsible for some of the world's most iconic sports cars of the past half century. 350 GT, Miura, Countach, Diabolo. The brand has achieved global recognition for its no-holds-barred approach to automotive engineering. Its extreme and powerful machines have placed it among the supercar manufacturing elite for decades. But there's no room for complacency in this increasingly crowded marketplace. And a decade since the launch of their last flagship model, the Merchelago, it's time for Lamborghini to flex its muscles once again. It's up to Stefan Winkelmann, the company's CEO, to come up with a bold approach. One of the toughest things was to give the right briefing. And it took us weeks and months. And um, once I went home and I was thinking about it's so easy. And it's just down to two words. So no competitors. Four years of intense development follow, conducted in fiercely secretive conditions. Our factory was as close as Fork Knox. We had to prevent anybody from coming in and taking any picture to avoid leakages. But finally, in March 2011, at the Geneva Motor Show, Lamborghini casts off the secrecy and unveils its latest model. Ventador LP704. Its launch has huge implications for the future of the company. For us, the Aventador was something which has to re-establish the leadership to be a benchmark for a decade. So it has to be a jump of two generations, something really different from what has been there. Powered by Lamborghini's trademark V12 engine, the Aventador can reach speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, and it travels from 0 to 100 in under three. It's their fastest car yet. But remarkably, speed isn't even top of Lamborghini's priorities for the Aventador. Stefan Winkelmann has laid out his vision in a manifesto for the future of the supercar. Now in our days, it's much more important to speak about the power to weight ratio. So uh, the balance between the power of the car and the weight of the car. And for us in the future, it's much more important to reduce the weight because you get a better feeling, a better driving experience. The Aventador is the first test of this new blueprint. And the National Geographic Channel has been given unique access at the Lamborghini factory to witness the creation of some of the car's first incarnations. This is Sant'Agata Bolognese, 
a typically picturesque town in the heart of Italy's Emilia Romana district. But it is, in fact, anything but typical, as it's home to Lamborghini, one of the world's most renowned supercar manufacturers. The factory is situated in the heart of what is known as Motor Valley in northern Italy. Sant'Agata is intrinsically linked to Lamborghini's success, according to its head of communications, Raffaello Poro. Everybody in the world recognizes our cars come from Sant'Agata Bolognese. And so our factory is a kind of, of temple where people come, they can say a pilgrimage, to visit where those cars come from. The factory has seen many changes over the years, but its purpose has never wavered, to produce vehicles that challenge the status quo. And a largely local workforce is a vital part of that ethos. They're coming from this region, not even from the region, they're coming from this part of Emilia. You know, we are in Emilia Romagna, it's the Moto Valley, and it, this is in Emilia. So a lot of our people are not only living here, they were born here, they, were, they are here since generations, and a lot of um, workers we have in our factory, in our plant, are here um, at the second generation. These people are Lamborghini's lifeblood. Over 400 individuals working with a singular aim to produce high-end vehicles that consistently capture the public's imagination. In the last couple of decades, a new breed of creative and high-tech vehicle specialists has emerged. Companies such as Pagani and Koenigsegg have set their sights on toppling the most revered names in supercar engineering. Names like Lamborghini. But it's unlikely that this Italian giant will let its mantle fall without putting up a fight. An attitude embodied in the company's emblem, the Raging Bull. Partly inspired by the bravery of Spain's legendary fighting bulls, one of which showed such fearlessness in battle that it was awarded a trophy for its courage in 1993. Its name was Aventador, and almost 20 years later, its legacy lives on in Lamborghini's latest model. It's Aventador's battling spirit that Lamborghini's development team must channel. In 2007, they're faced with the daunting task of creating a supercar that sets the standard for all others. Maurizio Reggiani, head of research and development, realizes that the only way of doing so is to take a step into the unknown. We had to completely redefine the car, to start from a blank sheet of paper, and on this sheet determine, for each function, all that was needed to ensure that we'd have the best car in the world, to completely redefine what constitutes a super sports car. To start from a completely clean slate is extremely high risk, and it's up to Reggiani to convince the board that it's the right thing to do. This was one of the hardest things. Why? Because the project we were presenting had nothing in common with the old Murcielago, not with anything that existed in production at all. So it really meant beginning from scratch with all the risks that come with that. But the board decides the risk is worth taking. At the end of the day, they understood very well, because this is, again, about what Lamborghini is all about, you know, to recreate and to be always revolutionary in the approach. The spirit of innovation is apparent in every fiber of the Aventador, as Lamborghini know that the fight to stay at the top won't be won through half measures. And nowhere is that combative approach more apparent than in their focus on lightweight construction, which they've taken to new levels with an entirely new concept for road cars, a full carbon fiber monocoque. 
These structures are common in racing cars, but the high cost of materials and laborious production methods have made them unavailable to supercar manufacturers, who've had to combine carbon fiber with cheaper, heavier elements, such as aluminium. That is, until now. The development team has devised a method that allows this race car technology to be mass produced. But it requires a specialist facility that's up to the task. So in 2009, they build a whole new mega factory just down the road from the company headquarters, devoted to constructing the Aventador's unique carbon fiber body. Which, being just 147 and a half kilograms, helps make the Aventador significantly lighter than the Murcielago, considerably improving the all-important power-to-weight ratio, and in turn, the handling. Lamborghini hopes that this innovation will stave off the threat by the new wave of rival companies. Lamborghini knows well what it's like to be the cocky young upstart, vying to unsettle the established names, as that's how it began almost 50 years ago. The man upsetting the status quo back then was the company's founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini. He had made a fortune from a tractor manufacturing business and used some of his money to satisfy his love of sports cars. According to Lamborghini legend, when he went to Ferrari to critique some of their parts, his views were dismissed. He got a negative response out of some requests he had and proposals to make a better car. And so he said, I will found my own company and I will create the best super sports cars ever. He established Automobili Lamborghini in 1963, and for the next few years, he toiled furiously to achieve his goal. The cars he created were well received, but it wasn't until the launch of the iconic Miura in 1966 that Lamborghini really made its mark. The tractor maker had succeeded in breaking into the exclusive world of supercars with his bold new enterprise. Almost 50 years later, despite having joined the ranks of well-established sports car manufacturers, the company still strives to be edgy and uncompromising. As demonstrated by its approach to the area it believes will define the future of sports car engineering, lightweight carbon fiber construction. The company's relationship with carbon fiber goes back as early as the 1980s when it created the Contash Evoluzioni, a concept car which experimented with the use of composite materials. It was dreamt up by the newly formed Composites Department, whose successor has made many inroads into research and development of lightweight composite materials. And discoveries made here mean that next door, the company has been able to construct its new carbon fiber production facility. The man given this task in 2009 is Ranieri Nicoli, industrial director. And he must devise it completely from scratch. So when we design uh, and we build this factory, we didn't have any automotive benchmark. We were the only one in the automotive business to build and to run this kind of technology. So they have to look elsewhere for inspiration. So we look to other sector, for example, the aeronautic sector, then we adapt and we modify their process to a Lamborghini production system in order to build our car. The result is 500 square meters of new production space, known as the CFK, devoted entirely to sculpting the Aventador's super lightweight monocoque.
here, 146 carbon fiber specialists toil day and night to create four complete monocoques every 24 hours. To achieve this target, engineers have developed a unique production system. All materials are first cut by an automated machine before being sent for preparation. The material is placed into molds and laminated in a vacuum bagging process which forces the layers into shape. Before being cured in a large pressurized oven known as an autoclave. Meanwhile, the production of other parts of the monocoque is underway. As operators fine-tune and cut more layers of carbon fiber with the assistance of precision lasers. A special oven is used to inject resin into the carbon fiber mats, which transforms them from soft sheets of cloth-like material to a strong, rigid structure. After all these processes are over, the two key sections are finally recognizable. The base section, known as the top, and the roof. They're placed in an automated machine, which drills them with holes allowing for attachments to be made later. Throughout the factory, computer-controlled machines share tasks with human specialists a partnership that's integral to the Lamborghini production process. The main priority of our plant was to follow the Lamborghini production system. So, with a high degree of craftsmanship, high degree of skill, people, combined with a technology, with automatization process. This was the main challenge that you can also see in our plant. Aeronautic-inspired engineering is ingrained in many aspects of the Lamborghini CFK production process. Such as this stage, known as the Harmony Hammer Test. In this quality control test, an operator strikes the monocoque section with a specially designed hammer and allows it to vibrate, listening out for areas where air might be trapped in the carbon fiber shell. Once checked, the parts are ready for their union as the tub and roof are glued together, turning the monocoque into a single entity. It's essential that the two parts of the monocoque are exactly aligned, so workers use a robotic arm with a 3D laser attachment to check that the sections have been coupled correctly. Once the correct dimensions are confirmed, metal sections are manually attached to the monocoque and the body is complete. Then it's into a light tunnel where surfaces are quality checked to ensure they're in pristine condition before the Aventador's body is signed off for release. As the body is ready to leave the carbon fiber plant, it's possible for the first time to see the Aventador's unique geometry taking shape. This extreme design is one of the most recognizable aspects of the Lamborghini DNA. And it's a tradition maintained and pushed forward here at Lamborghini's design center, or Centro Stile. The generational leap required of the Aventador does not stop with its engineering capabilities. The look of the car is integral to its ambition. The design of Lamborghini always has to be revolutionary. Yes, you have to understand if you see uh, a car in front of you, this can only be a Lamborghini if you, if you don't know the model. So it's about or create something new, but recognizable at the same time. The job of the design team and its chief, Filippo Perini, is made even tougher during the earliest phase of the Aventador's development. When the board forces them to compete with outside companies to earn the right to design the new model. And at one point, victory comes close to slipping through their fingers. The most difficult is when 
Durante el proyecto, the hardest moment was when, during the process, we realized that we were at risk of losing the project altogether. This was a critical point in the process when we realized that we had to be more innovative, more unconventional, more extreme, unexpected, and uncompromised. It's tough going, but the competitive spirit has a positive effect on the team, and their proposal wins the day. What results is a design imbued with a deep understanding of the company's past. Our design is driven by the history that we have, is translated into the desire to always do something innovative, to create a different object interpreted in the most futuristic way possible. This is part of the Lamborghini history. Certain design elements are considered vital parts of the Lamborghini flagship DNA such as the famous scissor doors. But beyond that, the design team have free reign to create something completely new. They have a sharp eye for aesthetics, but they also need a comprehensive understanding of the car's engineering needs. For style choices can only be made if they contribute to the car's high-level performance. Form always follows function, so there is nothing which is fake. Every air intake, every flap, everything is for real. So it's not pimped up, and this is tough and on the same way, because you have to do something which is very emotional. One engineering hurdle for the design team is the need to provide the Aventador with sufficient air to cool its V12 engine. In particular, in terms of design, we had to resolve the problem that this car, this package, demanded a big engine radiator positioned at the side sections of the car. So it needed a large air vent, which right from the start prevented us from dividing the mass of the car in three separate blocks, as we'd normally do. Going back now to the actual design, this architecture gave us the unique opportunity to design a car with one single line, this one. What emerges from this balance is a car whose style is intimately linked with its role as a high-performance vehicle. And its sources of inspiration are many, drawn from one of the team's most important tools, the brainstorming board. So we take it from nature, sport, technology, lifestyle, elements that we can integrate, and in that way, brainstorming gives us many design options. Details like the ignition button and TFT screen seem to come direct from a jet fighter cockpit. And the world of aeronautics influences a lot of other style choices besides. We think that aeronautics, airplanes, fighter planes, but even transport planes are the nearest expression to true beauty and the most advanced design that you can have from an artistic point of view, and also of functionality. We understood that we had to draw inspiration from other worlds, and nothing was better than nature as a reference point. So we took some images of insects that were great inspiration for the roof of the vehicle, with this shape. It's very linear, very sculpted. The result is a final creation that's instantly recognizable as being from a different era to its predecessor. And now that his responsibility for it is over, when Filippo Perini sees the Aventador out on the road, he can appreciate its design all the more. I saw an Aventador in Sant'Agata. It was next to a lorry, and I immediately called Alessandro Savanin, who was responsible for the exterior, and I said, look, I have an Aventador right in front of me. She's so beautiful. She looks so low, and the lorry looks so big. I realize now that we're like children, and now when we see the result of our work, when we see the car being driven on the road, we begin to love it again. Before Perini's vision can be realized, however, the Aventador's body still has some way to go. After the CFK, 
it's taken away to be given one of its most important characteristics, its color. Here at the paint shop, it's lavished with the kind of attention that most cars could only dream of. One of 13 colors are hand sprayed over every part of the bodywork. 27 pieces are given individual attention by a specialist who covers them with eight liters of paint. The Aventador, with its extreme lines, requires more man hours than any other Lamborghini in the past. And of course, every phase is carried out manually, as only human analysis and dexterity can ensure that each surface is covered with exactly the right amount of paint. In total, 200 man hours are spent on every single Aventador while at the paint shop. Three whole days are spent on polishing alone. After being carefully sanded, the Aventador is repeatedly buffed with special materials. After that, it's sent for another quality check in a light tunnel. For two hours, an inspector walks around the bodywork, checking for color perfection. If there's any inconsistency, the offending section will be sent back to be repainted. Underpolished areas are also marked out for extra attention. These hundreds of hours of devotion end when the exacting standards of the inspector are met and the car is released for the next phase of production, the assembly line. The assembly line for the Aventador lies just meters from the original site of the Lamborghini factory, built almost half a century ago. Back then, its founder, Ferruccio Lamborghini, was known for his hands-on approach, frequently seen on the factory floor, directing operations. He focused on the skill of the mechanic as being key to the success of the product, and that attitude still permeates the site today. Here, 50 workers spread over 11 workstations are responsible for the task of assembling Lamborghini's latest model. The man in charge of making sure things run smoothly is production manager Andrea Costantini. He sees his highly trained workforce as a direct link with the roots of the company. In this case, uh, the, the workers are the most trained. Uh, we take these uh, guys uh, directly for the best uh, schools uh, of the mechanics of uh, Emilia Romagna here, the, the surroundings uh, of the Lamborghini. And we train uh, for more than two years uh, to allow them uh, to be really uh, the best uh, uh, experts uh, on mechanics engines. So uh, everything is done manually. Uh, still like we did uh, since 1963, since when Mr. Uh, Ferruccio Lamborghini, the, the owners uh, of the Lamborghini started. In an age when machines dominate production in almost every field of manufacturing, loyalty to the art of skilled manual labor is not often seen. But here it's believed that when it comes to reliability and precision, humans still have the edge over machines. And nowhere more so than in the engine assembly station. For this is where the heart of the Aventador is put together the Lamborghini V12. At a time when many sports car manufacturers are shying away from using the 12-cylinder engine, Lamborghini is resolute. The V12 always has and always will provide the power for their flagship models. The V12 for Lamborghini is part of our DNA. Everything for us is rooted in our history, which started with the 12-cylinder engine. With six and a half liters of displacement and 700 horsepower, the Aventador's V12 is about as gutsy as it gets. But as with everything else, it's had to move with the times. Lightweight, again, is the order of the day. And despite the fact that this engine is more powerful than the Merchelargos, it weighs less, just 235 kilograms. 
by using aluminium silicon alloy on components such as the crankcase. The main purpose of the V12 is to power the Aventador, but when linked with the car's exhaust system, it takes on another significant role. Creator of the mighty Lamborghini Orchestra. The V12 motor represents what for us is the sound, the music of the car, the way in which it's presented to the public, the way she makes herself heard and announces her arrival. To achieve this, we invest a great deal of time in simulations. We simulate the sounds that we can have, and then we experiment first in the lab and then on the vehicle itself. This 12-cylinder symphony has a full range from a moderate rumble through the town at low revs to the screaming crescendo of maxed out gear shifts. While the V12 is being assembled, the body of the Aventador arrives on the assembly line, ready for conversion from an empty shell into a fully functioning supercar. As the company's latest foray in a highly competitive market, the Aventador needs a production process with efficiency to match. The drive for improved efficiency was for sure coming from the market, from our competitors. We have always to be the best, to be the number one in terms of product, in terms of performance, but also in terms of quality. So to become and to stay at the number one, we have always to have a huge increase of efficiency, a huge increase of uh, quality in the assembly line and in all the process inside the factory. The company's output of luxury vehicles is a mere fraction of what the large-scale manufacturers produce for the mass market, with around 800 Aventadors due to be created in the first year. But that doesn't mean the factory can't be run to similarly exacting standards of efficiency as the largest groups. And that means that workers have just one hour and 40 minutes to carry out a whole range of highly meticulous tasks. If they take too long, the whole assembly line will stall, targets will be missed, and costs will mount up. The countdown starts here at the first station. Work is carried out on the underbody and front differential by lifting and rotating the vehicle to give the mechanics easy access. Before being readied for what is arguably the most significant stage in the Aventador's production, the insertion of the colossal V12 powertrain into the car chassis. critical assembly station of the Aventador assembly line. Uh, here we have the assembly of the engine, the heart of the car, basically inside the, the body wire. We call it the marriage between the, the car and engine. This marriage of elements is when the development team's work of the past four years comes together, where design and engineering combine. Here, as with all other phases of production, the specialists of each station take full responsibility for their section. You can see the workers assign each and every single connection to be sure that each and every phase was done in a good way. Uh, the risk in this case is the car is not working properly afterward during the, the road test and uh, could be a, a big uh, problem uh, for uh, customer using. Uh, as you can see, this is absolutely not done uh, with uh, equipment, a robot, uh, or ar other automatics, but is done uh, manually. Step by step, the car is taking shape, being molded from empty shell into the fully formed supercar that will leave the factory. And while the assembly line is in full flow, next door, the second critical aspect of the Aventador is being prepared, the interior. 
It's in this sector of the factory that a customer's individual preferences for the way their car looks can really be indulged. About 100 square meters of leather hide in nine different colors arrives each day. Attention to detail is essential to pass the stringent quality control checks. Here, a leather specialist looks for minor imperfections in the hides and marks them up wherever found. An automated machine recognizes the marks and cuts around imperfections, leaving only pristine material for the Aventador's interior. The leather is then taken to specialists with three years training to be stitched and glued onto the various parts that make up the Aventador's interior. Back on the assembly line, one of the Aventador's most important pieces of kit is ready. This simple looking item is the suspension, but its apparent simplicity belies the creativity that goes into its engineering. The Aventador uses a pushrod suspension system direct from the world of Formula One race cars. It works by keeping wheel control and damper elements separate. By keeping the damper elements inboard, the pushrod system allows the wheels to maintain maximum contact with the road when going round bends, massively improving the handling on corners. A must for a car that can hit speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour. Il cliente finale cosa percepisce? Percepisce what does the client feel? He feels a clean driving, accuracy, that's something truly unique compared to all the other systems we used in the Merchelago. Another key feature of the Aventador's engineering, which has a dramatic effect on handling and the feel of the vehicle, is the transmission. The Aventador's transmission is operated by two shift paddles behind the steering wheel. But it's what's happening away from the eye that's most remarkable. The Lamborghini patented independent shifting rod transmission. This technology allows the shifting process to run virtually in parallel. While one shifting rod is disengaging one gear, the second shifting rod can already engage the next gear. Creating a shifting time of just 50 milliseconds not far off from Formula One transmission times, which average around 30 milliseconds. Such technological innovations are only made possible by extensive testing of the vehicle during the development phase. And possibly the most critical moment for the engineers is when the prototype model takes to the track to be put through its paces for the first time. For the Aventador, this happens back in 2008. Then we found ourselves at the first track run of the Aventador, which generated an indescribable emotion. At night, on the Nardo track, a small group of people seeing a creature move for the first time that had needed years and months, nearly a year and a half, before it was able to move. And the perception after these first laps, based on what our test drivers told us, was that we'd created something that really was the new landmark for super sports vehicles. The man behind the wheel of that prototype Aventador was Lamborghini's chief test driver, Giorgio Sanna. He's been a key member of the Lamborghini development team since 2001, a dream job for many. But the thrill of driving prototype supercars comes with certain pressures. We have a lot of responsibility because we do bear an enormous responsibility because we carry vast investments on our shoulders. So the feedback that comes from the test driver to the engineer and the technicians is very important for the development of future models. So when he puts the prototype Aventador through its paces for the first time in late 2008, he's greatly relieved to discover that years of intense development have not been in vain.
The feeling the test driver has in those first steps is important because he can immediately feel the potential of the car. And when I drove the first prototype of the Aventador, even though it was the very first test car, I immediately felt that this car had an enormous potential. I knew that it was truly a project two generations ahead compared to the Merchilago, and that this car would become the protagonist of a new era for Lamborghini. The Aventador is reaching the final stages of the assembly line and mechanics work quickly to get it ready for the next phase of production. Here we are in the last workstation of the Aventador assembly line. After four days of assembly, uh, over 50 workers in the line and more than 60 in the saddlery and the engine has assembled our cars. As important as the assembly process itself is the series of quality control checks that the car must undergo once it's complete. Any minor imperfection could impact on the car's performance, and its safety elements in particular must be rigorously tested. The brakes are checked in a room where the car is driven at speeds of up to 140 kilometers an hour on a rolling road. The Aventador's carbon ceramic brakes can take it from 100 kilometers per hour to a complete standstill within 30 meters. And in theory, the Aventador is capable of going from zero to 100 and back to zero in less than four seconds. Data from the anti-lock brake system is transmitted wirelessly to two dishes, then into a computer mainframe for analysis. The final task of the factory workers is to scrutinize the car in a light tunnel to ensure that aesthetic standards haven't been affected during the assembly process. But before it can be shipped to whichever global location it's destined for, each Aventador must undergo one final phase, the all-important road test. Every car is given its own test drive around the local area. They're put through their paces to check that their complex engineering is absolutely in tune. And it's here for the first time that the cars are enjoyed as they were intended to be. Only once the test driver is satisfied that all aspects of the Aventador have been properly configured, will he sign it off for release to the outside world. The Aventador has come a long way since the brief was first given for its creation in 2007. Years of struggle from designers, engineers and mechanics have culminated in a vehicle which looks likely to remain as Lamborghini's flagship model for some time to come. The risk of starting completely from scratch has paid off. And with the new era underway, Complete examples of the Aventador are rolling off the assembly line at a rate of 20 each week. But for Lamborghini, the challenge does not end here. As the company celebrates its 50th anniversary in 2013, it will be thinking of new ways in which it can push the boundaries of automotive engineering. Stefan Winkelmann suggests that a different era might be around the corner. Our two model strategy for the future will not be enough, so we decided to step into a third model. It will be a Lamborghini which you can be able to drive every day, so a very usable Lamborghini, but it will always have the DNA of the true Lamborghinis inside. A Lamborghini for everyday use may be on its way. But until then, the Italian supercar manufacturer will focus all its efforts on producing vehicles which aim to keep them ahead of the competition. And right now, the car leading that charge is the Aventador. Brand new Supercars explores the reinvention of the Porsche 911 at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Stay tuned for the latest Banged Up Abroad.